So today we begin the last unit of Algebra 1. Here we are at last, we've arrived at roots. Uh, so this is very different uh, than factoring and quadratics and everything that we've been doing the month of July. Um, I know you've heard of square roots before, so you're going to have some familiarity going into this, but obviously we're going to be doing a lot of new things with square roots. And today's goals, we are going to learn how to simplify an irrational root. I'll tell you what that is in a minute. Um, and then we're also going to learn how to simplify roots containing variables. And uh, I'll be sure to include one example in this video. Uh, we'll do a bunch more together when we meet today. Okay, so let's just talk about, before we get to irrational roots, let's talk about rational roots. These are square roots that you're probably familiar with. For example, square root of 25. Well, why is this referred to as a rational root? The reason is, is because 25 is a perfect square. So when I square root 25, I just get 5. There's no decimal or crazy irrational number involved here. This is just a nice round whole number 5. That is a rational root because 5 is a rational number. Same thing can be said of 40, uh, the root of 49. So root 49 is equal to 7 because 7 times 7 is 49. Again, 7 is a rational number, so it's a rational root. Pretty simple, right? Well, what we're going to spend a lot of time with today are what are called irrational roots. For, the, for example, square root of 2. Now, why is this considered to be an irrational root? Well, first of all, the numbers you see here on the page, 2, 6, 24, and 60, the thing that they all have in common is that none of them are perfect squares. There is no number I can square to give me 24. There is no number I can square to give me 60. Those numbers technically don't exist, but we can get really, really close. If you put, for example, square root of 2 in your calculator, you're going to get something. You're going to get a really long decimal comes out to be 1.4142, I'm just reading my calculator here, 1, 3, 5, 6, dot, dot, dot. This goes on infinitely. Your calculator is trying to find this number, but remember, this number only exists in an approximate sense. There is no rational number that we can square to give us 2. So the square root of 2 is irrational. It's about 1.4. Now, if I look at square root of 24, right? Well, we just said a minute ago that the square root of 25 is 5. So this has got to be close. This is a number that's about, I would say it's about 5. But if you do that in your calculator, you're going to get something, you're going to get an irrational number really close to 4.9. But again, it's an irrational number. Now, the big question here is, what can we do with irrational roots? Is there a way that we can still simplify them, even though they're not rational numbers? And we certainly can, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So, we call this writing in simplest radical form. So, the square root of 75. You know, first of all, I, I know that that's not a perfect square. There, there is nothing I can square to give me 75, but I can simplify this. And the way I do that is I ask myself, are there any factors of 75? that are perfect squares. And one that comes to mind is 25. So I can rename the square root of 75 as the square root of 25 times 3. I've just renamed it as you know, a product of factors here, 25 and 3. Now 3 is not a, it has no square root, but 25 does. So what I then do is I take that square root outside the radical. So the square root of 25 is 5, and inside the radical, I'm just left with the square root of 3. So 5 times the square root of 3, or the way this is said is, this is referred to as 5 root 3, is your simplified radical answer. We've taken the square root out as much as we can, and this is what we're left with. Okay, square root of 40 is still pretty simple, right? Okay, so square root of 40, again, 40 is not a perfect square. But think right now, are there any factors of 40 that are perfect squares? Well, one that comes to mind is 4, right? The leading digit is a perfect square. So I could think of the square root of 40 as the square root of 4 times 10. Now, take the square root of 4, remove that from the radical. So that's just the square root of 4 is 2. And now I have 2 root 10. And let's see if we're done here. Or are there any other perfect squares that I can factor out? Well, 10 doesn't have a whole lot of factors, right? 10 just has 2 and 5. 10 factors into 2 and 5. That's it. And neither of these are a perfect square. I can't, I can't 
square root 2 and I can't square root 5. So we are in fact done. This is our final answer to root 10. Now for this last one, it takes a little bit more work perhaps. There are some perfect squares here that we can factor out, but you're going to need to do this one in several steps. So the first thing is it's 1 away. It's not an easy number to work with. But I know it's even, so I know it's divisible by 2. So I'm going to rename this as 2, the square root of 2 times 54. I just wrote that as a product of factors. 2 times 54 is 1 away. Okay, neither of these is, is a perfect square. So I got to look again. Okay, well, is uh, can I? This fifty four still even, right? So I can I could rename that. I could factor out another two. So I could say two times two times twenty seven. So again, all I'm doing still is renaming one hundred eight as a set of factors. And now look here, I have a square because two times two is four. So this is the same thing as saying four times twenty seven. So now I have, well, square root of 4 is equal to 2. So I take that outside the radical, and I square root it. So now I have 2 root 27. And I'm still not done here, right? Because if I think, okay, now think about 27. Are there still, are there any perfect square factors of 27? There are. So this is going to be 2 times the square root of 9 times 3. 9 is a perfect square, so I can square root that and take that outside the radical. So the square root of 9 is 3, and then I'm going to multiply that by the 2 that's already out here. So our final answer is going to be 6 root 3. Now, just for sake of argument, you could have done this problem a totally different way. For example, if you're a little clever, you might see that 36 is a factor of 108. I could have, from the, from the jump, renamed 108 as 36 times 3. It's not as obvious, but just to show you that you could have done it this way, 36 times 3 is 108. 36 is a perfect square. So I could take 36 out of the radical rename it as 6, and then I would still just have 6 root 3. Now, real quick, I want to show you one problem with a variable, because this is going to lead into what we do as well today. Um, I'm going to do a very simple one here. The square root of 196 y squared. Well, if you put 196 in your calculator, this one's pretty friendly. 196 is a perfect square. So, I can just rename that as 14 and now I still have the y squared in here, right? So it's 14 times root y squared. But just think about that, right? Is, is y squared a perfect square? Well, yes, it is. We this, Think back to when we did differences of squares a couple weeks ago. Remember, y squared is the same thing as saying y times itself, y times y. So the square root of y squared is I just take that out of the radical, and that becomes 14y. And we'll see a bunch more of these with exponents higher than 2, but this at least gives you the idea. Okay, plenty more still to come. This is just a nice introduction. Uh, we'll do plenty more together.